Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Arizona Adventure Park. In today's episode we are working again on our safari zone and I might think when we are finished with today's episode and with the build of today's episode we might be halfway there. That means we might have finished half of the whole safari zone so that um, yeah I think in about yeah maybe eight to ten episodes we might be finishing the whole area here so in today's episode we are going to build something for the mandrill as i told you in the last episode i was thinking about or was it one of the last episodes i don't know i was thinking about putting in some monkeys in the safari zone i usually didn't want to have some monkeys in there because we have the monkey islands or the lemur islands at the beginning of the zoo and on the back side of that should be a area where we have all those monkeys and apes in there like the gorillas chimpanzees bonobos um, orangutans and yeah so I wasn't quite sure if I do want to have some of the monkeys in the safari zone as well but we have so many of them I thought it it would be a great idea to have some different animals in here and not just hoof stock and elephants and yeah when we can't have some of the big cats that we already have in the cat uh, in the cats canyon at least we have some monkeys in there so i was building something quite similar to what we have at the lemur islands so i wanted to have an indoor section for the mandrills which is not quite finished at the end of the video i might uh, go back into there and do some finishing touches some more decoration and go in to make the building look a little bit more attractive but with that being said i wanted to have an indoor section for the mandrills where our visitors can view the mandrills from the inside of the building and i also wanted to have a big outdoor area close to the lake with the lake in the background and with a nice viewing point to the aviary where we have the flamingos in there and i did want to have the mandrills cross the street cross the path from our visitors so i put in this kind of a window on the um yeah on the outside of the building and built something like an overpass um, where the mandrills could walk over the heads of the guests and enter their outdoor area. So if you want to build something like that, you might think, how am I gonna do that? Because the keepers can only enter via one gate. So we can't have more than one keeper gate in our habitat and if the keeper can enter the house he can't enter the uh, the outdoor um, area of the monkeys and if he can enter the outdoor area he can't enter the house so to solve that problem you have to yeah you have to know that you are right the keeper can only enter one thing um, whether the indoor uh, area or the outdoor area, uh, area but it's not possible that he can enter both not when it's separated um, uh, through the uh, the path so you have to decide which one you want your keeper to enter and you have to make sure that you put all the food supplies for your animals in that area that your keeper can enter so in um, in this yeah, in this build here i'm going to have the keeper gate um, at the indoor area for our uh, mandrills so i had to make sure that we have all the food supplies in the indoor area so i put all the feeders in there 
and all the toy enrichments on the outdoor area. So once again, I told this several times, I think now, um, when you have like two separate areas, try to have the food enrichment on one area and the toy enrichment on the other area. So that means if your animals are hungry, they have to walk from the outdoor area into the indoor area um, to get some food. If your animals want to play, if they are bored, they have to walk to the outdoor area. So that means that you automatically have um, a lot of movement with your animals. They are not just sticking on one place and not moving anywhere. So they will walk from one side of the habitat to the other side of the habitat. Yeah, as I said, you have automatically some movement in your habitat. Um, and the next thing is also when you have some kind of an indoor area, you don't want to have all the stuff in the indoor area because when it starts raining outside or snowing or your animals are scared or are annoyed by the guests, uh, they also will walk from the outdoor area to the indoor area. So with that being said, always think about how you can make sure that your animals are very active and are moving around so they don't need just more space but make the space usable for them yeah here you can already see um, the overpass it might not have been the cleverest thing to have those wood beams on the outside of uh, the building you might see that later in the video that uh, we have one of the mandrels that is doing some weird stuff and climbing on the wood beams and uh, onto the sunshade and across across the the visitor path and walking on water and yeah very 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 weird um, so that is also a thing that i might go back in there and change those wood beams to uh, metal beams doesn't look that nice when you have those metal beams but when you have climbing animals it uh, yeah it is necessary so here um, for the backdrop of the habitat i used those four rocks again i sank them very close into the ground because i didn't want them to block the view to the flamingo aviary so I had to sink them uh, very deep in the ground, but um, uh, in such a manner that you have this um, a steep kind of um, drop down into the water so that the animals can't walk into the water or take a swim in the water. So I think uh, we won't have any problems with the mandrel because they don't swim, they don't go into the water, they just walk on water, but that is a different kind of, uh, of thing. Yeah, but um, uh, for other animals you have to make sure that you have a steep entrance into the water when you don't want them to go into the water and take a swim or uh, swim away and leave the habitat at that, uh, at that way. Yeah, here you can see the process where I am uh, building custom fences. I wasn't quite sure which, uh, in which direction I wanted uh, direction I wanted to go, so I tried some uh, different things, and um, yeah, I wasn't quite happy with a lot of the stuff that I came up with, and in the end, I decided I go again with the mesh fence, um, with the mesh fence pieces and um, make some nice thing out of it a little bit different than uh, the fences that we already have and I wanted to have a small fence where our visitors can easily look into the habitat of the mandrills I didn't want to have something like a huge um, a glass wall or something like that once again I'm using the mulch pieces um, uh, for some planting 
to make that dry mode uh, disappear a little for our visitors which isn't that steep I um, I took a different approach this time I used the faux rocks and not the concrete pieces um, for um, yeah for the side of uh, of the dry mode and I think this is a, yeah a nice and a different idea and it looks it looks pretty nice it's yeah it's something different not always the same thing and I also didn't want to have the dry mode in the end because I thought no that is too dangerous I think the mandrel could escape it because as I said it wasn't that steep um, for those uh, monkeys and I thought it would be safer to have some water in there because uh, as I said the mandrels don't swim and they won't go into the water so it won't be a dangerous thing for our guests to um, uh, to look into the habitat when there is some kind of water in there so the animals um, wouldn't be able to escape In real life, I think they would be able to escape. They absolutely would be because that, um, yeah, that uh, that water section isn't isn't wide enough. I think they could jump uh, over it and leave the habitat that way. But in the game, I think uh, there there won't be a problem. Yeah, time for my favorite part once again for rocks and plants a lot of uh, lots of them i always try to check out when i place them especially when i place the plants i always check out the view how the whole thing does look because that is very important to me especially with the uh, flamingo aviary in the background um, as i said in the beginning and um, in between and always in the whole video i always wanted to um, to make sure that the aviary was uh, in the center of the whole thing so that you can see it perfectly from this side of the lake so I tried to plant uh, to plant the growth um, the growth. <laughs> I wanted to talk German right now. Um, I wanted to say the großen Pflanzen, um, the big plants on the sides of the habitat, and um, the smaller ones in uh, in the center or leave the center area open, so that you have this nice view that you can see the whole time here. Yeah, that was not a good idea with those yellow acacia because, uh, yeah, that's uh, way too big and wouldn't make any sense in the habitat. Yeah, and also the stuff that I always do, um, I just put down a lot of shrubbery, sink it to the ground, sink it very deep into the ground so that it uh, sometimes it just sticks out only a little bit that makes the whole thing look so much more natural and so much nicer and uh, yeah. Just, just try out. You can also use those uh, little trees that I also um, did use here and sink them also into the ground. Um, sometimes they give a very, very nice texture for the habitat. Yeah, we have the plants in the habitat now it's time to give those animals a little bit of food enrichment as i said um, i wanted to have the food enrichment on the indoor area so that our animals have to go into their house when they are hungry and i'm also placing down the keeper gate for the indoor area in a few minutes Yeah, and I also wanted to make sure that the connection works between the indoor habitat and the outdoor habitat. I had a little bit of problems um, most of uh, most of the times when you build something like an overpass. Um, it is it is a process of trial and error. So you have to try out um, uh, 
does it work, can the animal reach um, uh, the thing. Um, in this case my animals weren't able to um, uh, to enter the platform and go into the um, into the overpass so I had to change that and um, delete the platform and just um, use those uh, yeah those uh, those wooden platforms so that the animals could walk on there and didn't have to climb on the inside of the habitat um, so like this what I do here on the outside and after I changed that it uh, it worked perfectly and the animals can walk over there yeah, it was also a little bit risky to build that overpass without checking out how much space the animals need. I have to say I was very lucky that it was big enough for the mandrill. I guess if I did it and um, yeah, did it for the sh uh, for the chimpanzee or for um, orangutan or gorilla, it wouldn't have worked out. They would have needed much more space. It had to be. Uh, pretty much double the size of uh, of that that I already have in here so that they could use it but um, yeah as I said I was pretty lucky that it was big enough for the mandrill so if you do something like that um, you might want to check out first if it is big enough for the animals so um, or you have to be uh, or you have to be uh, prepared to delete the whole thing afterwards and uh, build something a little bit bigger uh, which could be very very annoying and frustrating but um, I guess there is no easy way to find out how big the hitbox of the animals is or how much space they need um, to use something like an overpass If there is an option, um, just let me know in the comment section. But I, but I think there is no such thing where you can check out that. Um, but for the mandrills, it is safe to say that these. Um, what did I use? Is it the two by two meters? Yeah, I used the two by two meter pieces um, and they are perfectly fine for the mandrills. So don't make it any smaller. Um, I think that won't work out, but the two by two meter pieces are, are perfect for, for mandrills. And I guess for any apes or monkeys in that size, every animal that is bigger than that um, might need something like a four by four meter or at least three by three meters. Yeah, so laying down the barriers. I almost only use the invisible barriers because I, um, yeah, most of the times I don't have use for the in-game barriers. Sometimes I use them as well, especially the mesh fence pieces. Uh, there are some uh, of them that are pretty nice looking and I, I like to use them sometimes as I already have in this zoo as well. But most of the times I'm just sticking with my own fences. Yeah, here you see what I said. Um, I used those wooden platforms um, so that the animals could, uh, could walk over there in the overpass. Yeah, and here the mandrills are here and they are using the overpass. The whole family is walking on the island. I have a lot of them in this habitat because the outdoor habitat is pretty huge and I thought okay there is enough room for all of these animals. Yeah, and if you look on the left side to the house have you seen the male mandrill that climbed up the wooden post and is now on the on the sunshade for the visitors. Now he's climbing down um, you haven't seen it I, uh, I put him on the island um, because he walked across the street was in the habitat and did something like a moonwalk on the water and was back on the uh, on the visitor path and yeah it was very very weird 
And um, yeah, as I said, that is why I think about changing the wooden posts mm -hmm. um, and uh, the whole wooden structure at the house into some metal pieces because this is uh, this is not what uh, what I wanted to have. Yeah. But with that being said, we are already at the end of the episode. I don't know yet what I'm going to build in the next episode. So if you have any suggestions, just let me know in the comment section. If you did like the video, if it inspired you for your own builds, um, yeah, just leave a like, leave a comment, um, sus uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episodes. Also, you don't miss any episodes on Waveland Park if you're interested in it as well. Um, just check it out. And yeah, I guess I see you guys in the next video one week from now. So take care. Bye.